Hi guys, it is a blissfully cool, though somewhat humid, Wednesday, I'm sorry, Tuesday, July 10th, 2012, here on the rock, as we take a mild break from uh, what's shaping up to be the single hottest years since record keeping began like 125 years ago you might notice we have some some water in the creek the toads are celebrating but anyway today's rant is uh, going to be about my hero Terence McKenna Terence McKenna whether or not you know who Terence McKenna is I hope you stick around for my rant and I hope you take my advice to, uh, to go view this video that I'm going to recommend to you that just hit YouTube a couple weeks ago. Uh, definitely, if you're into Terrence, you need to watch this video because it just comes out with some pretty amazing stuff, which I'm, I'm going to talk about. But guys, for any of you listening to this who are not familiar with Terrence McKenna, uh, do whatever you can to change that in your life. I've, I've had several rants on Terrence before, and many of my favorites that I have posted, I've probably posted about 20 of my favorites, are talks by Terrence McKenna. He is the closest thing I have ever had to a guru but I'm not going to go off for 30 minutes trying to tell you who Terrence McKenna is. You, I'm sure Wikipedia has a very good page on him, although I've never gone to see it. I'm just guessing. But anyway, this video that was just released is called A Deep Dive Into the Mind of McKenna. A Deep Dive Into the Mind of Terrence McKenna. Uh coming at you from the state, the YouTube channel Terrence McKenna Tube. And there's going to be a lot more videos in the near future being released by them. And this video, guys, is... Let's see, how long is it? it it's like an hour and 33 minutes. Now, unfortunately, I see... I'm gonna I'm gonna have to fix this because the one I have here is broken up. But you can get the full video in one, and uh, I will put that in the links. It's uh. So my first recommendation: if you don't want to spend an hour and 33 minutes on this video, you might want to just start about minute 24. It, it takes a long time to get into the flow. Like, I, like I'm guilty of myself sometimes, probably now. Uh, but this is a talk that comes from the Esalon Institute. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a mixture of Terrence and this other guy named Bruce somebody, one of his buddies, uh, reading the uh, reading excerpts from the new book by Terrence's uh, kid brother, Dennis McKenna. And this is where this new information, it comes at you not from Terrence directly and not from this fellow, his name is Bruce Damer. Bruce Damer. Uh, this was recorded on June 16, 2012, released on July 4th. Uh, so Bruce Damer is reading uh, this long, among other things, what Bruce Damer is doing is reading this long excerpt from uh, Dennis McKenna's new book, new biography of his big brother, and the book is titled Brotherhood of the Screaming Abyss. Brotherhood of the Screaming Abyss by Dennis McKenna. I hope to get around to reading that. It's on my list at some point. But anyway, he he goes to the chase and what he what he claims what Dennis 
Terrence McKenna's kid brother claims based a lot on interviews with Terrence's ex-wife, Kat McKenna, is the fact that, that Terrence McKenna never did mushrooms after 1988. That the last mushroom trip that, that Terrence ever had was in 1988, which completely flies in the face uh, of what I have been led to believe by Terrence himself and what thousands and thousands of devotees in, uh, of, of Terrence McKenna have been led to believe. But, you know, if I really had to, uh, you know, back that up, I probably couldn't because Terrence, kind of like Ann Rand, was very careful when he was talking about his various mushroom trips that he took in his life. He never put a date on them. So even if he was speaking, uh, he died in 2000, but even when he was speaking in 1999, 11 years, uh, supposedly after he did his last mushroom trip, uh, you know, he wouldn't say like, this is a trip I had in January of 1994, for instance. So maybe he was talking about some mushroom trip that he had uh, before 1988. Who knows? And it's almost like, who cares? You know, once you get over the shock of this new information, just which completely makes no sense on the surface, you know, it, it, it's kind of like, like who cares uh, whether Terrence McKenna uh, did mushrooms uh, after the year 1988 or not. That, that really does not fundamentally uh, change the uh, the message, at least the the, the the message that I find so important in, in Terence's body of work, and uh, which is his comments. I mean, it, you know, when Terence was talking about his crazy mushroom trips and his ayahuasca trips and his DMT trips, whatever, his various hallucinogens. You know, they're fun to listen to. The guy, he's just fun to listen to. He's funny as hell. Uh, he throws out some pretty wacky ideas that have absolutely no provable, verifiable facts, uh, but, but they're fun to listen to. Uh, he had some pretty crazy trips, whether they were before 1988 or not. Uh, you know, I've had some pretty crazy trips. If you've ever done, in particular if you've ever done five grams of mushrooms, I, I assure you, that you've had some pretty wild trips too, uh, and the mushrooms and, and, and other hallucinogens too. Uh, so, you know, his his crazy stories about his mushroom trips are just are, are just part of the mythology. But guys, this is not what Terence McKenna was, in, in my opinion in my opinion, and why he has been so important uh, in my own uh, spiritual development and helping me pull my head out of my ass and whatnot, is his views uh, j just on where this culture has gone completely, totally wrong on every single level. Uh, one of my favorite talks he does is titled Culture is not your friend. That where we have gone uh, in, in this culture, in this country, and more and more and more as this sick, twisted, corrupt model that we call culture uh, in the year 2012 and, and which was ramping up when uh, Terrence was talking about this in the 80s and 90s, you know, this whole culture which is going global, it is, it is entirely sick and twisted. It is warping our brains as individuals, as societies and civilizations, and it is bringing down this planet.
This is what he learned from the mushroom god. What is, you know, which is so important. And this is, uh, he, you know, uh, and, and to sit here, and, and it drives me crazy. It's, you know, so many people who the only thing they hear from Terrence McKenna is about his crazy drug trips. They're the same kind of people, uh, you know, who think that Carlos Castaneda and Don Juan, that Carlos Castaneda is probably fictional teacher, Don Juan, that all they did was sit around and do hallucinogens. Nothing could be further from the truth. If you've read Castaneda, I think what he, he's got 10 books depending on how you look at it, nine or ten books in the series, drugs are never mentioned after the second Castaneda book. The, the, the last seven to eight books in the series never mention drugs again. That uh, as, as Terrence and Castaneda or Don Juan, uh, whoever you want to want to call from that thing, are talking about is, is how hallucinogens, uh, and, and, and Terrence is most famous for his heroic dose of five dried grams of psilocybin mushrooms, what they are good for and why, why Don Juan and Terrence McKenna both recommend doing these heroic doses uh, at least once in your life is the fact that it, it, what Terrence would call it, is cleaning your disc. Cleaning your disc, that when you do five grams of psilocybin mushrooms, guys, trust me, your disc will be cleaned. This is what, uh, why Don Juan Matus was so intent on, on, on Carlos Castaneda early, early in his 13-year apprenticeship to Don Juan, fictional or not, was you know so important that early in this awakening process that these large doses of of hallucinogens are very important tool but that's all they are they are a tool they are one more tool to immediately pull your head out of your ass to clean your disc to to understand uh, immediately that this reality that's being presented to us, this line of course shit that we are being sold uh, in this culture, it exposes it for the big fat lie that it is, that there are, there are entirely different levels of reality to consider, entirely different levels of reality to consider, it, you know, when they run the gamut from the most horrific doomsday scenario right on up to paradise, to absolute visions of paradise. Uh, and, and, and you are presented, the when you do five grams of, of psilocybin mushrooms, if you're anything like me, and I assume like Terrence, you are presented with the entire tableau of, uh, uh, of potential realities. You know, uh, now, now trying to make sense of all this stuff, you know, that's what it's, that, that, that is what I've been doing ever since I did five grams of mushrooms in May of 2008. I've been, you know, and since then, just for any, and for anyone who's, uh, who thinks that a ham bone little tail uh, is doing five grams of psilocybin mushrooms, you know, uh, once a week, I have done them three times in my entire life. I have not done five grams of psilocybin mushrooms since September of 2010 was the last time now I will be doing them again shortly, uh, but guys, since, since September of 2010 and April of this year, I guess April of 2011 and April of 2012, I did one gram. Uh, when you do five grams of dried psilocybin, this heroic dose, 
it, 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 you know, it is not some little ha-ha, uh, you know, little recreational experience to have with your buddies at a picking party. You need to find the person who you trust more than anybody on this planet to spot you. You need to go out into nature where you will not be disturbed by anybody particularly. You need to eliminate any chance of having an encounter with a cop. But you don't want to have you don't want to have social intercourse with anybody when you're doing five grams of shrooms. You need to have your the, the closest person you can find to your soulmate doing no mushrooms, sitting beside you just to spot you, just in case you have one of these meltdown trips that uh, supposedly, allegedly, uh, Terrence McKenna had in 1988. And what is reported here, I guess, is it third hand or fourth hand? This is, uh, again, this is, you know, this is Bruce reading Dennis's words uh, Dennis basing his information on Terrence's ex-wife. Is that third hand or fourth hand? And of course Terrence has no chance to respond to this. Allegations by, by his kid brother. Uh, I can only imagine what my big brothers would, uh, would say about my mushroom habits. I can only imagine what they would say, uh, whether I'm dead or alive, I, you know, compared to the real truth. But what she reported, what Terrence's ex-wife reported to Dennis, who then, you know, wrote it in this book, which I have not read, but it is quoted at length here, is that what happened on this trip is that, quote, the mushroom god turned on him. And guys, the mushroom god is, is, is no one to take lightly. The mushroom god is very real. Uh, I guess I was called an atheist. Yes, I am no atheist. Uh, you cannot take five grams of dried psilocybin mushrooms and be an atheist. If you, if you consider yourself an atheist, that'll, uh, that'll change your opinion real quick. Uh, if anybody out there has done five grams of mushrooms and, and still considers themselves an atheist, please write me and, and tell me about it. But anyway, I guess on this trip, supposedly, I, now I'm bringing this to you, what is this, fifth hand, uh, that the mushroom guy turned on him and, and forced him to, uh, to, to factor his own self in to it that, that made him confront himself. And well, I'm not surprised about this at all. I was really unclear. I'd, uh, the, the very first mushroom trip, the five gram mushroom trip that I took, uh, good God, in May of 2008, right off the bat, it made me confront myself it made me own up to my part, my personal responsibility in creating this mess. And, and you know, my personal responsibility in admitting to myself how much I was buying in to this big fat lie. My God, I was a realtor. I was a real estate agent for Keller Williams Real Estate when I, when I took the red pill in the form of five grams of dried psilocybin mushrooms. It immediately, right out of the gate, the mushroom god held the mirror up to me, you know, it, it, it held the mirror, it forced me to look into the mirror. And, uh, and, and understand my part in this mess. And uh, that is why I have done, you know, I have dedicated 
uh, the last four years of my life to extricating myself from this mess, to facing up to my personal responsibility and doing whatever I can on a, my teeny weeny little life to no longer to free myself. And you know, the main ways I have done this are by getting rid of that gas sucking car that ties me to these oil companies, tearing up my, you know, slicing up my credit cards that keeps me enslaved to these global banksters, uh, reducing my income from, uh, from six figures to four figures, uh, and reducing my consumption of this crap by about 95% in my life. You know, refusing to walk into a Walmart ever again. Taking the vow of, of chastity to Walmart. Uh, and, and, you know, as I reported, uh, I, you know, it's pretty, as, as, as is talked about here, that when you do understand how truly truly messed up this culture has become and you step out of it you will alienate yourself you will find you will alienate yourself from who you thought were your best friends you will become alienated from your family from your 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 circle of friends will will dry up and blow away uh, as I can certainly attest to your your the effects on your social life, your family life, most likely your love life, your sex life, uh, all of this you will become alienated from, from, this, from the people who have not unplugged themselves from this. You know, uh, it's one of the, the hardest things that you will encounter on the path to awakening is when you find that nobody is going along with you. You know, but the mushroom God has put me on this rock. I am a disciple of the mushroom God. You know, that's what I'm doing on this rock. I am following orders from the mushroom God to do what I can in my teeny weeny little personal life to bring this message to you. It is the same message that Terence McKenna was trying to bring to people, but right up right up to the day he died. They even include excerpts, you know, from the very last interview of his life, you know, right before he died. This was the message, the important message that he was trying to bring. And uh, the fact that, you know, that, that got Terrence depressed, uh, I don't think that had to do with that. It was the fact that so many of his little, his little groupies, his little groupies, that they weren't hearing the message. All they wanted to hear about was, you know, his crazy mushroom and ayahuasca and DMT trips. That's what they were there for. And so, in order to keep his little tribe together, you know, he had to feed them what they wanted. But it's my guess is that the vast majority of Terrence McKenna groupies, just like the vast majority of, of Carlos Castaneda slash Don Juan Matus groupies, who only read the first couple of books in the series and never went any farther that uh, they, they completely misunderstood the message. And the, the, the message had almost nothing to do with hallucinogenic drugs or as I prefer to call them, spirit guides. Plant-based spirit Guides and yes, guys. I know fungus are you know mushrooms are not quote plants, but for most of us, mushrooms are plants. 
Uh, the plant-based spirit guides are a damn good way to wake up to what's going wrong uh, in this culture, in this society, this civilization on this planet. And then you need to rarely, maybe once a year, I think Don Juan uh, did mushrooms, once, once a year would be my, be my recommendation. Mushrooms, ayahuasca, peyote, San Pedro, uh, whichever plant-based spirit, hallucinogen you, you choose, you should sample them all in the beginning, figure out which one works best for you. I happen to agree with Don Juan Matus. Mushrooms were the ones that he identified with. And so that is the one that, that Don Juan, it sounds like, did about one time per year. You should sample all of these once or twice early in the beginning of your awakening process. Find the one that works best for you, you know, and then once a year, once a year, uh, refresh your memory, uh, be preached to by the mushroom god to keep you on track and uh, but whether you're a Terrence McKenna fan or not I will shut up now so you can get to the much more important obligation to yourself to listen to this video and uh, all the other Terrence McKenna videos you can get your hands on because despite the man's crazy theories he was spot on spot on about what is what is going on on this planet in this culture in this society in this civilization and on this planet and uh, you will be doing yourself a great favor by uh, turning into the genius, the prophetic genius of Terence McKenna by delving deeper and deeper into the mind of Terence. And with that, I'm going to climb off this rock and say, bye guys. Look at this water. Don't you love it? Water in the creek. And the forecast sounds like even more. My other tripod washed away, so this is what I've been using today. Anyway, I gotta go. Bye, guys.